There's Lee. One reason I'm going really slow here is one, the pallets are disintegrating and I don't want the brick to fall off. But another reason is if you turn too fast in a skid steer, you're going to rip up the ground that's underneath and I really don't want to rip up the driveway. And I also don't want to tear up the ground that we're going to have for pasture. went way better than I thought it was going to go. Some of these bricks have been here for years. Lacey's dad has worked in masonry 
and some of the surplus brick over the years gets accumulated here. But uh, we're getting them out of the way, moving them out so that way we can get some more vegetation growing. That first pallet of brick, I was a little worried that it was going to fall apart because it had been there so long. But being in the skid steer actually really reminds me of working with my dad. And because I used to be the tractor girl. And uh, so I've been driving one of these for over 20 years now. It's kind of hard to believe. Most of the pallets are wooden pallets, and over time they just kind of break down and disintegrate. But this one here is a plastic pallet, so we'll see how long <laughs> these pallets hold up. Next we have a stack of this big heavy block here. Come on, come on, come on. There you go. Come on, come on, come on. What? Knock those two off because you're going to fall off. Okay. Throughout this pregnancy, I've been very cautious about lifting you know beyond my means I know what my limits are and so I use the tractor to lift all the heavy things I need moved and so that's why Mike's on the ground lifting those heavy block and not me bending right there. Come on. Take it over there. Shuri is a tough homestead and lady doing that while pregnant. Really appreciate it. You guys ready to work? Yeah, but Coco got hurt. You did? Yes, sir. What's wrong with her? The pad on her paw, it got cut. You see Coco. it? Sit, sit, Coco. Coco. Hey. Hey. Hey, um, so this part right here. Ouch. 
This hurts. Mm -hmm. Alrighty. Let's go ahead and take her to mommy and let mommy do her thing and fixing her up. Yes, sir. I tried touching it already, but she kept bending her leg back and licking my hand. I mean, she doesn't want it to. Be, she doesn't want it to be touched. Yeah. What do you think happened? I don't know. Maybe metal cut it. Yeah. Mom. Yeah. Coco got hurt. How'd she get hurt? I don't know. What's wrong? Come here, sit. She got hurt on the pot. Let me see. Not her front one, her back one. Lay, lay down. Let me see. Oh. Ouch, girl. I'm gonna take her in and get her taken care of and bandage it up. Come on, baby. Come on, Coco. Where is she doing? <laughs> get the sawdust off of you, girl. Stop. I got water, peroxide, some bandages, some tape for the bandages. <laughs> okay, it's a pretty clean cut. So, oh, I know, baby, I know, I know, it hurts. So I'm gonna wash it out first with just a little bit of water. Okay, put some water on here to wash it out. It's not cold, it's not hot, it's lukewarm. I know, I know, I know. Yeah. A good girl. Yeah, I know, I know. Hold on, Coco. Next, I'm going to use some peroxide to get it clean in there. I know, baby. I know. No, 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 no. I know. That's okay. Whatever she sliced it on, it was a clean cut. Still wag as a good girl. Now, I've got some of this that I've made. And all it is herbs that have been infused into coconut oil. And it will just kind of melt down in there. And that's what I want. I want it to get all down inside the cut so the coconut oil it melts at a low temperature so I'm just gonna let it kind of soften up in my hands or on my skin and what this will do is it's calendula and yarrow and coconuts also anti microbial. I'm trying not to really open the wound or touch it too much. But I want all this to get in there to keep the stuff from growing in there. Because even if we wanted to go to the vet today, it's it's a Sunday and they're not open. <laughs> a good girl. Yes, it's a good girl. Yes, you're being a good girl. That was just infused oils. This is a salve, so it's got some beeswax in it, so it's got some sticking power. And what I like to do is take some salve and put it on a bandage. And then I'll cover a wound with that so it'll just stay there. And she's probably not going to like this on her foot. So I'm going to cut some of this off because we don't need all of this. Okay. Now what I'm going to do, so I'm not sticking anything to her. I'm not gonna bandage this super tight. Just something to hold this other bandage on. 
that's probably about all I need. I know, I know. This is called make do bandaging. <laughs> Alright guys, if you could go ahead and start gathering up the loose brick. And I'm going to work on cutting up these branches and loose stuff that is here. Now this area was wooded and we've been gradually chipping away at getting rid of some of the trees. And so that way we can have some more areas for our animals to graze in. And we just had the goats in here about a week or so ago and they really cleared out the vegetation, mostly the things that are higher up. We're ready to move on to the next phase so we can get even more things growing here in the spring. As we're cleaning up in here, we're harvesting what we can from the trees that have been dropped. Not all the trees have been dropped. We've left the healthier trees and hopefully they'll get healthier now that they're not surrounded by some of the other trees that have been taken down. But as we're coming through here, we're getting various wood as well as kindling, which really helps with making starting a fire so much easier. And the goal is just to gather what is reasonable without killing ourselves. Ah, like this stuff right here. Focus. Definitely gonna be burning that outside. Yeah. Uh, the wagon, look how much damage the wagon uh, has. Yeah, man. You guys are beating it up, doing the work, doing a good job. I think you need a metal one or something, don't you? Yes. <laughs> Disintegrated the pallet. Dad, we just took half of the pile 
Good. Get a good workout in at the same time. Yeah. What in the world are you doing? <laughs> you ready to cut some stuff up and down? Yes! <laughs> you got a couple more years for that. <laughs> Next, I think we'll make a meeting. Well, we still have a lot more wood that we'll be harvesting as we're converting wood to pasture. We have this long strip of trees that have been dropped. And I know it's not ideal area to convert to pasture, but hey, we're working with what we got. But before we move on to the next section, where we were working, got to set the fence back up, and then chickens in the chick shawl will need to close them up at night, and then in the morning, move them over to work on fertilizing, scratching, and doing things that chickens do in that area to help to get it ready for the next phase. So that paddock will be done, but how is Coco doing, our prego construction vet lady? <laughs> what a title I've earned, prego construction vet lady. I, I do it all, I guess. <laughs> Uh, Coco's doing really well. She actually kept that bandage on. I put a sock over the bandage. She kept it on a lot longer than I thought, so all that stuff was able to get down in that cut. Um, but, you know, she pulled it off, and I figured that she would. But we're just going to keep an eye on it and make sure we keep it cleaned out and keep some salve in it and healing up. Well, as you can see, we have our work cut out for us with that long strip of woods that we have to clean up. So that's that project on top of some other projects on top of needing to get things starting going with the second year we were planning to set up. Oh yeah, and in several weeks we have a baby coming. 
So, definitely got a lot going on. Uh.